Paul from High Tech Legion and we'll be taking a look at the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 670. Comes in a black box, as you can see. Back doesn't have anything spectacular, but it does have GeForce GTX on the front and the NVIDIA logo. This is actually a slide out package. And there is an interior box which then has a cover. And then we can see the card. Pulling the card out, first thing you'll notice when you grab the card, if it's an, of a reference design, is that it's going to be fairly light. It's probably one of the lighter, higher end video cards that I've ever touched myself or grabbed or held. Taking it out of its protective uh, anti static bag. We can now take a look at the card. The outside is encased with a plastic cover. It does have a rear fan mount, so it pulls in air from the back and releases it out the front. The GeForce GTX logo is on the side, right by the two six-pin power connectors. Turning it around, we can see that it's made on black seat PCB, and it is nine inches, nine and a half inches in length. It is PCI 3.0 compatible. And taking a look at the front, we see we have two dual link DVI connectors, one full HDMI output, and one full display port. I know some of you were giving me a little, little bit of a banter there because I misnamed the dis mini display port on my last unboxing uh, video. But let's go ahead and, and talk, about, talk about the 670. The 670 is a GK104 GPU, Kepler design. So basically what this is is the 680's baby brother. Now it comes with 1,344 CUDA cores and it has seven SMX units. So basically it has one less SMX than the 680. It has a total of four 64-bit memory controllers equaling 256 bits, two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Now these operate at a speed of 6,000 megahertz data rate. So basically you're getting, you know, per each, per each gig about 3,004. Now the total bandwidth of this is going to be 192.2 giga, gigabits a second. Its clock speeds are 915 megahertz and with the GPU boost you should approximately get about 980 megahertz. Again, as we take a look, this is only nine and a half inches long. And it requires only two PCIe connections of six pins. Now, the total TDP of this card is going to be 170 watts. Average gaming TDP with our test we found is about 144 watts and it basically idles at 12, 12 watts. So for those of you who don't have a really healthy power supply, you're going to get a benefit because this card only requires a 500 watt power supply. So let's take another look real quick at it, at the card itself. Rear fan, intake, pulls through the front. Pulls air in from the back, makes it come through the front. Two six pin power connectors with the GeForce logo. Plastic encasement. Two dual link DVI connectors, one full HDMI connector, one display port connector. PCI Generation 3, PCIe, sorry, Generation 3. It is SLI capable, 9.5 inch board, 170 watt TDP, 1344 CUDA cores, the 680's baby brother, and for those of you who may have purchased a card recently, you're going to be kicking yourselves in the head. 
when you actually read this review at hightechlegion.com and see the numbers that this put up, I will literally say they are amazing. You're getting a lot of performance in a small package at a price of $399. So everyone, for the full review, please visit www.hightechlegion.com. Stay thirsty, my friends. See you next time. Bye-bye.